Welcome to Monthly Horror Storyteller. For well, this edition of Storyteller, we're pleased to welcome Jack Jolly, longtime friend and fellow citizen of Murfreesboro and Rutherford County. Jack, welcome to Murfreesboro Story. Thank you, John. Appreciate it. Good to see you. You left out one thing. We both lived on Church Street. That's right. We surely lived on North <laughs> Church Street. It takes us way back. <laughs> when I think of you, I think of coach, and then I think of baseball as well as football. So you've had quite a coaching career, Jack. We're in the early, early days and weeks of the current baseball season. Made us think of you and that bringing you on to talk about baseball in particular, but sports in general. Well, I can go back a long time, John, and you can too. And uh, I mean, I can go back in the 30s. Now, if you want to get back to Kerr <laughs> Field and on, on Martin, East Main Street. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that's where Murfreesboro Central played football yeah, too. A long time ago. And I saw m many a baseball game there. And of course, my father uh, copied just like him in baseball because he had played uh, professional baseball and he'd been a professional umpire. Is that what got you interested in baseball for your, your father's involvement uh, in it? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad, uh, he played baseball, was a pretty good baseball player, mm -hmm. and uh, he managed one of the old teams like the uh, Foxtrotters or whatever they were, or the, the uh, uh, Socks, okay. actually, yeah. and uh, so I followed my father, okay. and uh, unfortunately, in one thing, World War II came along. Okay. So, but it helped me in a way because we moved, uh, my mother and my sister, myself, moved. My dad was stationed in North Virginia, okay. so I got to see a lot of baseball there, oh, of major okay. leaguers that were there. Yes. I mean, I saw people like Pee Wee Reese mm. and uh, Phil Rizzuto yes. and guys like that. So I was interested in it, and uh, and then I played in it too. Sure. And uh, then, of course, uh, I loved football too. Mm. And uh, football kind of was my game in a way for a while. I, I came back to Murfreesboro in 1946, I think it was. Uh, my sophomore year, I believe you were a freshman then. One year behind you. And, uh, right. But your wife was in my That's class. Right. correct. And uh, I came back to simply to play football for Murfreesboro Central. You know, that's what I'd always... Absolutely. And, Was that uh, Coach Lee Pate then? No, n not then. Not then, okay. Uh, Mr. Petter... Oh, Petter. That's when uh, Central had burnt down yes, on yes. Uh, Maple Street, and we were going to school at the university on the bottom floor of Main uh, there. The Central High School then was spread, I think, at university, also at the old Tennessee College for Women, and even some classes at McFadden, as I recall. Well, I think that I think when it burnt down, that's what happened mm -hmm. to them. But, that's what I mean. Okay. But after my sophomore year, we went, Mr. Hopgood bought the Tennessee College for Women, right. and uh, that's when we moved over to the, over there, right. and that's where I basically graduated People, I say, I graduated from Murfreesboro Central, mm -hmm. but uh, not that building that's out there right now. Yeah. 1948, and, uh, did you graduate from high school, mm -hmm. right? Yes, it was. And then uh, graduated from MTSU. Yes, I did. You have undergraduate, mm -hmm. master's degree, both? Uh, and from MTSU. educational specialist. At EDS, all right, very yeah. good. Okay, three degrees from MTSU. Well, if, you, if you're going to stay in coaching and teaching, sure. Uh, you better get as many degrees as you can. Absolutely. And, uh, when, when, when did you first coach uh, football and where? Well, I coached him in elementary school. Oh, all right. At uh, Critchlow. And uh, we used to have to practice, walk down to Grantland Rice Park, okay. if you remember where that Very was. Right. But in high school, uh, I coached at Smyrna High School. All right. It was great. I just loved those kids to death. I, I usually was a hard man, and they'll tell you, 
and even you got a person that works here, uh, he can tell you that at times I do go off the track. <laughs> and uh, anyway, but we won't talk about that too much. Was Mr. McWilliams a principal at Smart Enough that Yes, time? he was. J.J. McWilliams. He was a great man, Absolutely. too. Because that school was so disciplined. Mm -hmm. you, I mean, unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And uh, we went. We were at the old rock school oh, when well, I went down yes, there. Right. And uh, I coached football down there, but they didn't have baseball, see, okay, sure. in, in anywhere in the high schools uh, in the county. And uh, I stayed there three years, but I wanted to get a master's degree, so I knew I was going to have to come back up here. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually, I didn't know what I was going to do. And my wife, who r really makes more decisions than I do uh, for what I'm going to do, and uh, she made a good decision then. Good for Dolly. Uh, well, <laughs> in other words, to be truthful to you, I, when I quit down there, I had so many opportunities to go to Alabama, go to Georgia, go up to East Tennessee and go to Middle Tennessee okay. in coaching football, okay. right. either as an assistant coach or as a head coach. And where did you go from Smyrna? Went to Critchlow. Okay, back, <laughs> back to Critchlow. Critchlow. All right. And uh, I was there, and then I became Ray Hughes, the late Ray Hughes, mm -hmm. if you remember him. Uh, Ray was real close to me and my family. John Swaffer was too mm -hmm. at that time. And uh, so I was there at that time. And uh, then I was working on, I became a physical education teacher, All right. like Faith Phillips. Do you remember her? Very well, Burns Phillips' wife. Yes. yes. She, she uh, taught physical education at uh, Bellwood. No, no. Hobgood, Hobgood, and uh, do you know that their son is commissioner of labor for the state of Tennessee? Her boy. Uh huh. Right. Burns. No, the I third. Didn't. Uh -huh. and Anyway, I I had physical education at Critchlow and Mitchell Nelson. Okay. All right. And uh, that's funny thing in all of that. Uh, when I was in Smyrna, in 1959. Mm -hmm. Uh, was an amazing year. I had met Gilbert Sharon, who had been the principal of Mitchell Nelson. Right. He also at one time was the national principal of the yes, year, just like you've been the national mm -hmm. exchange club <laughs> president. And uh, Gilbert and Libby, his wife, mm -hmm. uh, I hadn't really dated anybody about that time. I did have one in, in high school, but uh, he said, I've got a teacher, Jack, over here. You ought to start teaching. And Butler James, if you knew him, oh, yeah. uh, he and his wife, Joanne, God rest them all. And uh, I would go over to their house a lot and they kept saying, why don't you date this teacher that I have? And it was kind of funny. I said, look, if I got serious with that teacher and we were to get married, she'd be dolly jolly. <laughs> now, you know that would not never happen. And? 57 years later, <laughs> She's, she's dolly jolly, right? That's right. She Very sure good. is. Then let's go to baseball, Jack, and, and your involvement in baseball. Right. You've coached baseball, you've played baseball, and you've scouted for baseball. Sure do. Take us back to the, the playing and coaching part of it. Okay, let me go back to the coaching. Okay. Uh, when I went to Tullahoma, well, if, before that, uh, Jimmy Earl. Yes became the head baseball coach at uh, MTSU. Mm -hmm. And he called me up and he said, Jack said, I need a favor. I said, what's that, Jimmy? And uh, 
He said, I'm the new head baseball coach. And, and I don't know anything about baseball. <laughs> Will you help me? Wanted somebody that does. And I said, at that time, I was teaching physical education between Mitchell Nelson and Chris. Right. I said, uh, well, yeah, if I have time. I said, so I went out there and talked with him. I said, well, if there's one thing, Jimmy, I want to be put on scholarship, mm -hmm. pay for my, uh, in fact, I was working on my master's yes. in to get that. And he said, no problem at all. And I really enjoyed coaching baseball, except one thing happened. I sprained my ankle so bad <laughs> to teach a physical education that I was on crutches there trying to coach, trying to coach, baseball. coach baseball. But we had a first time we got a nice bunch of kids mm -hmm. there. Uh, and that was when you could give scholarship was the first time, I think. Okay. Uh, I know I played, when I played out there, uh, I played under Coach Real. Okay, Frank Real. Uh, yeah, he was such a great man. Yes. And uh, gosh, what an athlete he was. And uh, he he taught, I mean, he cared for his player. Mm -hmm. And I learned a lot there too. Mm -hmm. Of course, my daddy, uh, I, let, I forgot to say this, he had umpired when he was in the Navy, believe it or not because the commanding athletic director, uh, he was a commander, mm -hmm. his uh, name was Frank Lane, and mm -hmm. he'd been general manager of the, I forgot which it was, the Chicago White Sox. I don't remember the name. And uh, anyway, uh, the Cleveland, I think, that, that's where I learned all those uh, Major League Baseball players I'm were sure. there. Uh -huh. and they got my father to umpire. And so he umpired against, like teams would come in there with big name uh, major leaguers. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. And uh, he enjoyed that. And they were in the service also, right? Oh, yes, sir. Right. They, uh -huh. they were. What was, your, what was your greatest thrill in coaching baseball? My Winning the championships or special situations, things that happened to you during your coaching? Oh, I. I could pick a million things, I guess, sure. not quite that much, John, but uh, just to coach kids. Mm -hmm. uh, I, th I tell you, we had a chance in uh, 1978. Okay. That bunch, we were playing, and, and that's when I, I really got upset with Murfreesboro. I probably sh shot my mouth off. Uh, which I have been told. Uh, you got over it though, didn't you? No, it didn't. <laughs> well, eventually it did. But we did not have any lights in Murfreesboro oh, to play. For the field. Yeah, absolutely. Uh -huh. And we couldn't get them. Uh, Steve, ne ne he never got to play under lights at Oakland, mm -hmm. even that far. But uh, George Hockenberry mm -hmm. is due for that because he was my assistant coach okay. at that time. And he was coaching basketball too. And uh, he, he became the coach of baseball after I retired. Okay. And uh, he was working on, and Ray Duffy was working, the recreational director the recreational. Here, was working on that at that time. One of the greatest to, friends I ever had. Yes, he was. And uh, never forget him. Now you you retired from Oakland, is that right? As, right. As, as the baseball coach. Nineteen eighty eight. Nineteen eighty eight. And the uh, the field, the the stadium is named for Jack Jolly, right? Right. Uh, we'd hope to do the program there at the uh, at the stadium, but due to inclement weather, we thought we'd better come inside and have a conversation like this. Well, I, t to be honest, John. I don't want to hurt your feelings or anybody else, but we're just not that age that we can get out in this kind of weather. I, oh, I, absolutely. Well, I understand that. <laughs> and I, and relate I was, very well to that. And yeah. I was happy. <laughs> tell, tell me about your scouting. Now, you scouted for a number of professional teams, 
in particular the White Sox, right? The Chicago right, White Sox. Right. You had the cap and the, and the jacket on. We were playing. Now, there were some guys. I'm going to name, throw a name out there. Sure. Sam, Sammy Dotson. D-O-T-S-O-N. Okay. He was with the Los Angeles Angels. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Los Angeles Dodgers. Dodgers, right. His brother is Guy Dotson. The now, Attorney General. Yes. Okay. Uh, that's, a former Attorney General, right. Yeah, Donna. that's the connection here. Well, Sammy, we were playing one day out there, and he and a boy named, another one named Jack Powell, I saw, we were playing over Tallahoma when I talked to him. They both said, what are you going to do when you retire? Mm -hmm. I said, Sammy, I don't know. I'll probably go up and get a job like my daddy did over at the court. You know, so I work with the recreation mm -hmm. department. Sure. Well, that didn't work out because I retired on Tennessee Co Consolidated Retirement TCRS, System, right. which is the same retirement that uh, they're on here now, I think. It is, and you would have gone back to work only part-time, right? You, right? you couldn't work full-time. No, I couldn't do that. Right? So I said, well, Sammy called again. He said, Jack said, uh, no, he called me Mr. Jolly, okay. right to this day. <laughs> and he said, sure. anyway, I, I've said to him, Sammy, quit calling me Mr. I said, you're as old as I am. Mom. But anyway, he said, there's a guy that wants you to call him collect. Uh, he's with Montreal Expos. Okay. So I did, and the guy's name was Stan Zelensky. Okay. Now you learned that. And uh, so I went to work for him. Okay. He wanted, you know, I was just, what then I was called an associate scout. Okay. In other words, I didn't get paid uh, unless I actually had named someone that was drafted. Okay. Then I was paid, okay. so, except uh, the Expos did send me a check at the end of the year, and it was I was around baseball and I learned things that I all the years I'd been in baseball, I mean absolutely. Uh, it's unbelievable what you look for. You look for bat speed. And I That's said, what I was going to ask you. What do you look for as a scout? Well, you look for pitchers, first of all. Okay. And uh, you have, there's so much about, number one, you have a radar gun. Okay. And uh, Get the speed of the ball. That's right. Mm -hmm. And you get the speed, and then you look to see if he has, alternate pictures, mm -hmm. which are a curve, a slider, or what they call a cutter, okay. and then a change. Okay. Then you evaluate that on a scale, five being major league, okay. four is major league on the rest, would be down three, two, one. Mm -hmm. You just kind of say, forget it. Okay. And I mean, that's a term that I've used and a term that some of my good friends have used before. They just tell you, forget it. And, you know. Yeah. And uh, then you have to write that down. Your What you do, you put out every inning, whether the guy, if he's pitching, you write down what he's throwing at that time. Okay. Or you can do that on a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. You can just write that down. And then you you look at his curve, whether it's sidearm, or whether it's at this angle right here. And uh, you, you watch for a change. A change comes like almost like a curve or fastball, comes this way and then it just drops, drops, okay. drops like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I finally, the best player I ever drafted when I was with the White Sox was a kid from Memphis University, Memphis State. 
And the coach told me I was down at Millington mm -hmm. watching another one of his players pitch and uh, several others, except his name, the uh, coach's name was Jeff Hopkins. Mm -hmm. And he, sa he saw me before, he said, Jack, he said, why don't you watch my left-hander? said, nobody pays any attention. I said, I guarantee you. So I watched him and uh, he had a great drop. And uh, anyway, to make a long story short, he was from Paducah, Kentucky, and I ended up drafting him. Oh. I got to draft him and uh, he ended up, and he was called up from Birmingham and uh, he was called up and he started winning for him. For the White Sox, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, then the second year, he was about two or three games over 500. But his third year, he was, it was right at the very first. He won, a, I think, about a couple of games and lost about, well, he might have been, I don't really know, but okay. anyone, anyway, I apologize. Sorry. Doesn't matter, I don't think. But he was pitching in Baltimore, and he took a line drive right off his heart. Ooh. And it just paralyzed him, basically. But uh, he never could come back. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was traded to Miami. Okay. And I think they let him go, too. What do you look for in other player, players other than, than pitchers? Speed. Speed. It's really thanks speed, uh -huh. okay. and uh, of course that if you see a guy that's you know in the threes or something like that, that's a guy that'll be in the Olympics, mm -hmm. and uh, so you look for speed, you look for arm, and then of course you look for the bat. Now let me tell you about each one has something that's different, mm -hmm. like your catcher. You want a kid that catches, first of all, that can catch the ball. Sure. And uh, you look for a kid, you look for his legs. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the time, people think that you need a guy with football legs, you know. Okay. But you need, I had a kid that caught, caught for me. I, I had great catchers. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a couple that weren't that way, but uh, I did have great catchers. And uh, if they can hit, which they should, mm -hmm. and uh, that is another factor. But their arm in throwing to second base is what you're looking for okay. in the threes and those things like that. And, <clears throat> and then, of course, how they whip the bat you know what whipping is, you know, it's kind of whipping mm -hmm. there, there, mm -hmm. kind of like that. Uh, but if they, if they have the size, the body bill, and uh, an arm, uh, that's what, that's mainly what you need, somebody that can throw the ball and can catch the ball. That sounds silly. Makes sense, very simple, but makes sense. Yeah. How many years did you coach for the White Sox? 24. Oh, not coach, but scout for the White Sox. 24. 24 years. And uh, let me tell you how that happened. I was from Montreal, not getting anything. Mm -hmm. The guy that I was working with, he, uh, he called Sammy. Well, Sammy Dotson called me and he said, Coach, he said, uh, no, he not, not Sammy, but the guy I was with with Illinois. He said, uh, uh, Chicago scout that I had met while he was down there, his name was Doug Lawman. Mm -hmm. he, uh, he said, he's going to switch. He's going with the White Sox. And he wants you to come as his part-time scout. I said, I don't know whether that's good or not. I would have been happy with, with that. They said, 
but you get paid. <laughs> And you get your expenses paid. It made a difference, huh? I said, yes, it did. <laughs> I said, well, I better go with them. <laughs> so I signed with the White Sox, and I was with them for 24 years. Absolutely. And what, is, what is the greatest thrill you've had in, in coaching, scouting, playing? Gr greatest uh, recollection or memory, I guess I should say, as well as thrill. Mm -hmm. I've had so many. That, okay. that is tough, John. I, Yep. You couldn't answer the same thing, yep. either your greatest there. Uh, I think uh, winning the district uh, at Oakland okay. four consecutive years, four I think consecutive it was. Four consecutive years. I think it was. Mm -hmm. And uh, we uh, have had football thrill, mm -hmm. you know, this sounds egotistical, but uh, everything's egotistical. egotistical. I have false teeth, by the way. You're doing <laughs> fine. Not having time. Uh, Smyrna, I coached the 1960 Smyrna football team mm -hmm. undefeated. Undefeated. That is the only Smyrna High School football team ever to go undefeated. Did not know that, and that's not being you egotistical, you're just right stating there. a fact. You that's just learned something. And uh, I enjoyed that. Uh, I had thrills. i never forget uh, in 78 when we won the district and uh, beat, uh, looked like we had, a, we had a better, much better ball club, but we were playing in Tallahoma, mm -hmm. and we are, we're playing Franklin County, okay. and we had beaten them already twice, and they were beating us and beating Kevin Gannon, my best. And uh, anyway, funny thing about it, had to take him out of the game, and at the bottom of the uh, seventh inning, we were three runs, two, two runs down, I think, and uh, came back and got. Uh, those two runs in tight and had a winning run on second. And I'd put Kevin in the outfield and he could not hit a balloon. <laughs> and he came up that time and I just said, Lord, who am I gonna pitch, you know, mm -hmm. the next game? And uh, he got a base hit <laughs> and we won the game. Oh and that's when we went on the, to play a team from East Tennessee in Tallahoma, and uh, that's when they beat us, and they were the, it was actually the semifinals of the state because if we'd have won that, we'd have played Montgomery Bell Academy okay. out of Nashville. They won that in the West, uh, but we got beat, and it was a thrill to get that. I think that, uh, and I never forget the mistakes I made and uh, anyway. But you have great memories of the successes you had. That's what's important. Jack, you've had a tremendous career. I appreciate you sharing it with us on the program. Uh, career as a coach, I guess, of what, Babe Ruth League, a high school, college, uh, baseball and football, and then scouting for a major league baseball teams. You've just been a, a, a great a part of the, the industry, if you will. And I, I have a great impression of the recollection you have of games and situations and players' names, and that's wonderful that you have so many, many wonderful memories. Well, I cannot say one thing. One thing. John. That'd be fine. I, when I retired, I remember I was called to the city council, and my state representative gave me a resolution that congratulated me from the state. Is that Representative John Bragg? No. That representative is sitting right next to me now. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Now, I'm not remembering real well. <laughs> yeah, I see you are. But, Jack, thank you for your friendship over the, over the years and, and for sharing your uh, sports career with us for Murphy for a Story Time. I enjoyed it, John. Thank you very much. Yeah. God bless you.